Father, we ask and pray that you'd forgive us for the times when we've been angry without a cause, when we've been excessively angry, Lord, and when we've been angry and let the sun go down upon our anger. Father, we thank you that the Lord Jesus, that when he was reviled, did not revile. We thank you that he willingly went to Calvary. He willingly allowed himself to be nailed to that cross and bore the punishment for our sins. And your anger, which was just and righteous and holy and pure, was poured out upon him, the anger that we deserve, the anger that we have justly earned. Thank you, Father, that in Jesus Christ, your wrath is turned away from sinners just like us. We ask for the cleansing of our sins in Jesus' blood and ask that we might love him and take up our cross and follow him all the days of our lives. This we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Welcome to the Spurgeon's Devotional Podcast a Christian podcast desiring to honour the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the devotion for June the 19th. A soft answer turneth away wrath. The tribes on the other side of Jordan received the deputation with courtesy and answered for themselves without anger. Joshua 22 verses 21 to 34. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knoweth, and Israel he shall know, if it be in rebellion or if in transgression against the Lord, save us not this day, that we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord or if to offer thereon burnt offering or meat offering or if to offer peace offerings thereon, let the Lord himself require it. Spurgeon says, In the sincerity of their hearts, they appealed to God that they had no idea of offering sacrifice anywhere but at the one appointed altar. Appeals to God must never be lightly made, nor in any case where anything less than the highest interests are concerned. It is consoling to feel that God knows our motives, but we must do our best so to act that God's people shall also know what we aim at. Verse 24. And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, In time to come your children shall speak unto our children, saying, What have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you, ye children of Reuben and children of Gad. Ye have no part in the Lord, so shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, Let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings that your children may not say to our children in time to come, ye have no part in the Lord. Spurgeon says they feared lest they should lose the means of grace and lest the Jordan should become a line of division between them and their brethren at some future time. Verse 28, Therefore said we that it shall be when they should so say to us or to our generations in time to come that we may say again, Behold the patterns of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord to build an altar for burnt offerings, for meat offerings or for sacrifices beside the altar of the Lord our God that is before his tabernacle. Spurgeon says their intention was thus shown to be honest, though the action had a very doubtful appearance. We are bound, however, never to put a worse construction than we can help upon other people's conduct. Verse 30. And when Phineas the priest and the princes of the congregation and heads of the thousands of Israel, which were with him, heard these words, it pleased them. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, said unto them, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us, because ye have not committed this trespass against the Lord. Now ye have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. Spurgeon says religious quarrels are usually very fierce, but in this case true wisdom ended the strife. When one is ready to explain and the other willing to receive the explanation, difficulties will soon be got over. May all differences in this family be handled wisely and tenderly and peace and love ever rule among us. Verse 32. And Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest and the princes returned to the children of Israel and brought them word again. 
And the thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God and did not intend to go up against them in battle to destroy the land wherein the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. Spurgeon says, Seal for the truth made Israel prepare for the war, but they were not hot-headed as some are in these days. Once enabled to believe well of their brethren, they were glad of it and gave God thanks that doubtful matters were cleared up. It is well to watch over others with holy jealousy, but not to be rancorous and bitter. Verse 34. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed, or witness, for it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God. Spurgeon comments, Thus all ended well, and true religion ruled on both sides of the Jordan. When shall our land become one again, knowing only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism? Well, as I'm reading this, it's being reported in the press that the flag of Islam is being flown over Westminster Abbey, and it's a sign that, uh, sadly, um, what Spurgeon longs for here is not taking place. It's the opposite. We're being handed over to the gods of the nations, which are idols, because of our unbelief and our infidelity to the truth of God as a people. But may there be still those in our nation and your nation, whoever you are, that find the Lord Jesus Christ and find the salvation that come from, comes from God. The offer of salvation is still open. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, that is, shall be saved. Well, uh, him here is, May the grace of Christ our Savior and the Father's boundless love with the Holy Spirit's favor rest upon us from above. Thus may we abide in union with each other to, and the Lord and possess in sweet communion joys which earth cannot afford. Amen. <laughs>